small camera. So, what the hell? Um, I don't know if I'm in frame or not. Doesn't really matter, right? Right. <laughs> so anyway, Anticondivod. It does need a slight adjustment, though. Ah, those three dollar cameras really do. Um, anyway, uh, so any kind of odds made another video. So, look, his previous videos have been sort of the argument from we can't overcome our nature, that uh, we're sort of born to be a certain kind of beast, and we just can't deny ourselves the pleasure of being a I don't know, somebody who would steal candy from a baby. Uh, you know, by nature, that's probably who I am. I don't really like babies innately. Never really did. Don't have much respect for them. Um, I mean, they look vulnerable and stuff, but I would, I, I, would, I would think my nature would be to assume it just isn't going to appreciate the candy as much as me. So, yes, I might as well steal it from the damn baby. Uh, but um, I've been educated. <laughs> you know, uh, to acquire the knowledge that I would be disgracing myself, all right, to stoop to such a level. Not so much that the baby's going to be harmed, but my integrity would be harmed. Um, I would be demonstrating a lack of discipline. And should even, even this idea that we would have acquire something called discipline would be um, something edification. Uh, you know, advancement in your <laughs> development, um, you would become aware of. Um, so, yeah, let's not have this stupid argument about, you know, can't overcome our nature. Of course we can. Um, and then now he's basically arguing now that, um, you know, our cultural heritage, you know, what ethnicity you grow up in or what civilization you grow up in must own us. Not, not in the sense that, okay, yeah, you're you're going to root for the home team a bit. Um, definitely, your conditioning is going to be is going to affect your sensibilities. Um, even the pronunciation of words. I mean, he speaks in English because of his culture, Canadian. That's different than my English. So some of his words are almost irritating because they're pronounced wrong by my English standards. And it's, you know, it, it, but so that's a, you know, but does anybody have a problem understanding that that's all subjective crap, like a food taste that doesn't have any real meaning, and that if it was important in any way, it would be something we could change, or we would be willing to change quite easily, if somebody demonstrated to be important. Um, so he uses his examples, uh, you know the kooks in the Middle East, and you know maybe the, the the people in in certain European countries who you know are feeling a little desperate in terms because of their their current lack of status, and uh, so they live uh, based on the glory years, you know when they were the hub of civilization, and feel proud of themselves for that, and uh, keep wanting to rub everybody's face in it, like you know we made you. <laughs> you know, we invented all the cool stuff you're exploiting now, kind of argument. So this sort of national pride thing. Um, and yeah, we're all vulnerable to pride, but doesn't any, don't, don't all intellectuals know that it's not, you shouldn't be proud of being owned by pride? That <laughs> pride isn't a, a good source of understanding or discrimination in terms of um, it being just subjectively based that again the mature educated thing to do is to acquire some knowledge of what is really important and be proud uh, of the accomplishment of um, you know not letting your subjective bigotries and biases to own you. I mean, they can still be part of you, but you just acknowledge their existence, acknowledge that it's just a, a fluke of your personality, and get over it. Um, but you don't make the argument that this is a 
a true philosophical barrier, that this is a, a true impediment to the advancement of the human species. Um, it's not. It only is in the context of how human beings um, have allowed civilization to develop in the sense that the, the, the no-betters have unfortunately been selfish and greedy, <laughs> you know, I suggest, and they just don't do anything to force civilization. They don't put anything on the line for it. Um, you know, so yeah, it's not going to happen. You're not going to have change in the world if you keep placating and um, um, so we're acquiescing to um, the obnoxiousnesses and rudenesses of the ignorant masses, so to speak. Um, they need to be ridiculed. People who live on ethnic pride need to be properly humiliated. Um, if you are, <laughs> you know, if <coughs> you know, flag waving and all of that crap, that nationalism stuff, and that you know, especially when it's just tied to ethnicity. Um, we should be embarrassed that we have something called the St. Patrick's Day Parade. It should be an embarrassment um, that we think people are entitled to some acknowledgement for irrelevancy. Um, hmm. I knew that was going to happen. Mm, too much talking. Ah, yes, the old the old, the tried and true old fan came through. <laughs> yes, sent me some cigarettes. Oh, she's just too, too, too nice a person. God damn it. Um, and clearly, she's somebody who acknowledges that inside she's a bit of a monster. Where's my damn matches? Um, you know, so she struggles with the idea of, um, being better than your nature and uh, again it doesn't take much intelligence I don't think to acknowledge um, that we should struggle against our nature that we were created um, by evolution or we exist through this process of evolution and evolution didn't make a nice animal it made a, a, a survivor and there's more to existence than survival. Your survival is not the gain. There's a thing called productivity. There's a thing called impact and influence on the entire game. And that's the measure of your value. Again, this will be not be a point Antikantavad will ever acknowledge, but it is f a fundamental truth. You will leave the place you will leave this place better or worse for your existence. Things will be better off or worse off uh, in some, you know, by some math. And that's just going to be a fact. And we can sort of understand some of the worst off uh, calamities that we can cause. Um, and we, we, civilized humans, recognize an obligation job one is to yeah do no harm uh, create no catastrophes um, don't make a mess uh, so it's almost like a timeshare thing we're here, we're here as a timeshare we get our little piece of playing human um, you know owning the condo the consciousness and uh, we have an obligation to the other owners um, not to make a mess of it, not to catastrophically ruin it. And uh, his philosophy creates evasions for that responsibility. He'll call it guilt mongering or you know, a crime against um, some beautiful spiritual nature uh, that needs freedom. And liberation, that you're a tyrannical monster if you start talking about 
your uh, entities who are going to inhibit what you've done to the place. You know, how much dog shit you've left on the carpets. Uh, and be back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. Mm. <sighs> addiction. These are words we can understand. We can understand addiction. We can understand bigotry. We can understand subjective preference. We can understand bias. Uh, we can understand that both our nature and our nurture can be um, not constructive. <laughs> there can be obstacles um, to our development and that we are, there are things to be overcome. Um, we can be raised by assholes who can be attempting to raise you to be an asshole and you can overcome that heritage and be better than the thing that created you. Um, it's just a fact. There's nothing stopping it. All it takes is the understanding, the idea of it, the knowledge that you're supposed to be, <laughs> you ought to be, you really must be um, sufficient to your circumstance. There are jobs and necessities built into the, the liberty you possess you have the power to make a mess or you have a power to create something magnificent out of your existence that's just the truth and it's a sensible logical ought that you ought to aspire uh, to be the best you can be <laughs> yeah um, to do the best you can with the opportunity with the the bit of game you're playing and uh, you know you either will or you won't that's a deterministic fact uh, I guess what I'm arguing is that people need to tell people they need to sometimes say these things because it has a cascading effect and obligation is an important concept and if nobody talks about it nobody says anything about it then it won't be satisfied because it is our nature to cheat and take and it helps to have the understanding that some people are going to see you taking and cheating they're going to know that when you stick that candy you were wrong to do it um, and your knowledge of their knowledge uh, might affect you enough uh, to motivate you to do better. Yeah, so anyway, so yes, I advocate for you being civilized. I advocate for you using as much rational judgment as possible in the determination of your choices, your decision making, and that you, wherever possible, um, present a negative mind state <laughs> when you hear such things as nationalism or prideism or egoism or all of this crap that you know is crap um, that has nothing to do with merit and has nothing to do with defining your destiny you're not your ethnicity you're not your race you're not all of all that crap doesn't mean anything really. The only thing you are is uh, a body and a brain, and uh, they can be anything, and it's been proven over and over again. Anybody can be president, um, but anybody can be a decent human. It doesn't matter what their nature is. Doesn't matter what their nurture is. They can overcome all of it and be a human being and everybody should be advocating that everybody try to be the best human being they can be that they take care of the condo 
uh, when they have the keys of um, opportunity to make a mess or to make something magnificent. Something like that. Anyway. No. Till next time. Let's see if I can hit this button. I'm making a mess. Yeah, still blinking. Okay.